back to the city. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back on YouTube with another Jack and Dexter video. And on this video, I wanted to do start a new series. Uh, this series is going to be called the What If series, or you can also call it an alternate timeline series. You can almost, if for you Dragon Ball Z fans, you can almost compare it to what some other YouTubers do, uh, where they talk about, uh, they do a lot of What If videos, like, for example, like, what if uh, Goku never got the heart virus, or, you know, what if... Uh, Goku would have defeated Frieza on planet Namek, uh, you know, and it just, you talk about the results of what may have happened. If, uh, so I'm going to kind of do that with these Jack and Dexter videos, and the subject of today is I'm going to talk about what if Jack was never arrested in Jack 2, because so at the beginning of Jack 2, uh, we know that Jack he gets arrested at the time we're not really sure why but we find out later it's because they think that Jack is the little Jack f that you meet later in the series because uh, Baron Fraxus knows that he's the heir to the throne and he doesn't want him to be so but he also knows that s for they don't really explain this very well but somehow he knows that Jack has is really good at channeling eco uh, I guess because he knows he's a descendant of Mar I really don't, not too sure how he knew that, so that's why he used him to do a dark ego experiments on him. So, but anyways, all that aside, let's talk about what would happen if he never, never got arrested. So, at the beginning of Jack and Dex, or Jack, I'm sorry, at the beginning of Jack 2, uh, they go to the rift uh, gate and they come and they fall Jack and Dexter and Samos and Kira get separated from each other. Jack and Dexter stay together but they crash down into Haven City and they're immediately met by Errol and the guards. So what would have happened if maybe Jack would have landed in a completely different area? Let's say maybe somewhere way out in the slums where Errol rarely ever goes or if he would, what if he would have landed somewhere outside the city and Errol would have never found him. Regardless of where he would have landed, let's assume that Errol and the Crimson Guards never found him. Well, I think the first obvious thing that would have never happened is Dexter would have never ran away, so Jack and Dexter wouldn't have been separated for two years. And the next obvious thing is since he wouldn't have gone to prison, he would have not have got Dark Ego experiments done on him. So we would have never had Dark Jack. I think I th this one's a little bit of a stretch to assume, but I think it's pretty safe to assume that Jack would probably still have not, still would not be talking. He, as we know in Jack and Dexter, he can talk. He just normally doesn't. He's, you know, a real silent type. Uh, because there's even parts in the first Jack and Dexter game that, you know, he he starts to say, you know, a word or two, but then Dexter interrupts him, you know. So uh, Dexter kind of takes on the voice of Jack in the first one, but Jack starts talking in the second one. Well, if this if he would have never got arrested, I think it's safe to assume that he probably still would not be talking at this point, even two years later. So let's talk about uh, Samos and Kira. They... Uh, let's just say, still assume that they would have got separated from Jack and Dexter. Uh, so Samos may have still got arrested. Uh, so let's go ahead and say that he does get arrested. Uh, the reason why he gets arrested is because he gets mistaken for the shadow, uh, which he technically is the shadow, just not the same shadow that they think he is. Uh, so they arrest him because they think he's the shadow. Uh, so let's assume that he still gets arrested and Kira still gets found by Errol and uh, she gets that mechanic little job that and then Errol comes by every once in a while. Kira and Samos are still in the same places, but Jack and Dexter are still together. Jack's still, you know, he's still uh, his self from the first Jack and Dexter. He's still really silent. He's still, you know, he's adventurous, but he's not like a bad A like he is in Jack 2, you know. Jack, the Jack from Jack 2, he's still adventurous, but he's, you know, he's kind of like, you know, real rough around the edges because of all the things that happened to him during, while he was in prison. So Jack would still be his same kind of innocent self, still willing to take on adventure. So the first thing is, would he be able to take on 
as many uh, metalheads as he does in Jack 2. Well, I think he could take on a lot of the small ones that were about the same kind of power as the Lurkers. But I don't think on he could have took on as many as he did in Jack 2. Because, well, first of all, he wouldn't have had a... He probably would have never got the guns. Because he would have probably... Knowing the type of... The way Jack was in the first one. He probably would have ne never met anybody like uh, Crew. And I think it's pretty safe to say he may have never met Torn either. Because he probably would have never even found out about the underground. Because... Um, the only reason why he even knew about it is because he just coincidentally, uh, <laughs> what you find out later, of course, that wasn't not a coincidence, um, that Cor he met Kor, and then Kor kind of introduced him to the underground. Um, so he may ha he probably would have never met him. So what would have happened to Jack? Where would he have gone? You know, where would have Jack and Dexter gone? I think it's safe to assume that they might have just... Um, knowing the type that Jack was, and before you think about back to the first Jack and Dexter game, before they ever run off to Misty Island, before um, you know Dexter ever turns into an Otzil or any of that stuff, Jack, you know, he was adventurous, but he never really went that far. I mean, the furthest place he ever went was Misty Island, and we know that it's pretty clear that Samos makes it pretty clear in the first one that they've never been to Rock Village they've never been to the other uh, they've never even met any of the other uh, sage huts introduced in the first one until later so the only one they knew was Samos and I think it's safe to say they probably didn't go much further than you know the Santel Beach uh, you know of course obviously they were in the village uh, Sandover Village, and uh, they may have went to the jungle a few times, but obviously they wouldn't have gone over the lava tube because they wouldn't have had no power cells for the heat shield. Um, so the furthest place in the first one that Jack goes is Misty Island. So that kind of gives us an idea that we know that Jack is very, he's daring enough that he's willing to go somewhere that he knows is dangerous, even though Misty Island's not nearly as dangerous as certain places in Jack 2, but that's beside the point. He didn't know how exactly how dangerous Misty Island was. He was just taking a chance. So we know that he's still daring. He's just not like real rough and gritty like he is in Jack 2. So if the Jack from the first Jack and Dexter was thrown into a world of Jack 2 but without being like he was in Jack, like he was in Jack 2, how would have he have reacted to it? Well, I think it's safe to say he would probably still have explored a lot. Uh, you know, probably being a lot more careful like he was in the first Jack and Dexter game because even, you know, with the Lurkers, they were really careful trying not to get caught, uh, even though they did. But they were really careful. And that the only reason why the Lurkers caught them is because the Lurkers are really good at, um, you know, they, they have that instinct, you know, to know when someone's coming close, you know, to be ready and know when someone's coming close. Uh, so the Crimson Guards would not have the same thing because they're just elected citizens from the city so the crimson guards would have not had that same thing so i think it's safe to say that jack it would have been a lot easier for jack to hide from the crimson guards as long as he stayed inside the city he could have avoided the metalheads and as long as he i think it would have been pretty easy for him to avoid the crimson guards the fact that the crimson guards would have not had a very been as good as tracking as the lurkers would have and Jack would, I think, would have known that the Crimson Guards were dangerous, and he would have known enough, you know, he's a pretty smart guy, I think he would have known enough to know that they were dangerous, and he would not have been as daring as he was in Jack 2 to take them on, because uh, he still kind of has that same old personality of just, you know, playing it safe, still adventurous and daring, but kind of playing it safe at the same time. So that's kind of a uh, the way Jack would have been, I would say. Um, so he probably would have never met the underground, but he probably would have met other people that would have told him what's going on, you know, where they were. Um, they probably may, I think, I don't know if they would have ever figured out at that point that they were in the future, or if they would have they have ever found Kira. Maybe. I don't know. 
So the those are just questions left up in the air. But I know for sure we know for sure that he would have never turned into Dark Jack. He, w- he probably would have never started talking, and I don't think he would have been as daring to go around stealing vehicles and, you know, taking on the Crimson Guard like he does in Jack Two. I think he would have just played it safe like he does in the first one and just kind of sneak around and adventure around, um, and just avoided the Crimson Guards. And he would have not even had to take on the Metalheads. If uh, he did not go outside the city, which knowing Jack's curiosity, he may have done, but the only place I could probably maybe see him going and still saying staying kind of cautious like he does in the first one is probably Dead Town because there's not nearly as many um, metalheads there. It's mostly just like little creatures um, so that aren't really about the they're about the same level, I guess, as like lurkers would have been. So, um, I would say that he would have been daring enough to take them on, but, and, you know, maybe a few metalheads, some of the weaker ones, but some of the stronger ones that he faces in Jack 2, I don't think he would have ever took them on, and if he, knowing that he just would have not had the ability to, and if he wanted to keep, continue to play it safe. So, those are my things. Those are the things I'm, you know, we know for sure, and some things we're pretty sure, I'm pretty sure about, but then there are a couple of questions left up in the air, like maybe what he, what he, what would he have done, would he have ever found, he probably would have never found Samos, because probably, I think it's safe to say that Samos may have died in prison, uh, but would he have ever met Kira, uh, you know, met back up with Kira, I don't know, maybe he would have happened to stumble across her, or, you know, whatever, uh, I think it it's a possibility, but I would not say it was a probability. I would say that he would probably continue to just play it safe and maybe adventure every once in a while. So those are my ideas. Um, if y'all have any other ideas of maybe some things that would have happened, y'all can leave uh, some ideas in the comment section below what y'all think would have may have happened if Jack would have never got arrested and thrown in prison at the beginning of Jack 2. So... Anyways, make sure to rate and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.